Yeah, all well. Um, yeah, up in the Midlands, uh, Sutton Coldfield, so not too far from from where Aston Villa's training ground is. Uh, currently working for Villa, doing some studying. Uh, you know, doing the badges. I'm on currently on the pro license, and uh, yeah, enjoying that and working in our loans departments, helping uh, loans and emerging talent, helping to support the boys that are that are currently out of the building. Um, you know, coaching, managing them whilst they're out on loan. What what was it like, Mille, when um because you got involved in you know first team training when um Steven Gerrard got sacked? How did you find that? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, mate, I loved it. Um, you know, it's it's always felt really energized around being around the lads. Obviously, knew a few, know, known a, a yes. few of them and, and played with a couple of them, but yeah, energized around the boys and uh, again want them to do the best they possibly can every single day i think would be my way of looking at it rather than just for the weekend just every single day would be my you know trying to energize and and, and see see them thrive every single day mm. um what do you think of the way that villa are performing at the moment under unai emery with his guidance uh, it's been fantastic um obviously you know they're on a fantastic run at the moment i don't think anyone's getting too carried away um i think there's a there's a real focus there and and there's a just a yeah a real discipline there in in, in everything that's happening and uh, it's it's been really it's been really encouraging for us to uh, for, for myself really to to to, to be witness of and, and see when, when you look at how they're playing at the moment Millet, and you, you know the club inside out the owners are on board you know you see the owners at the right times don't you the fans are on board with the team the players are on board with the manager just seems like a, a good place to be now doesn't it for a player for a fan for anyone who's working for the club and yes everyone wants to keep their feet on the ground don't they but they're so close aren't they Millet, to sneaking into that mm. top seven come the end of the season yeah listen there's definitely gonna the work's gonna definitely be cut out I think what you said and, and you made a really good point um, I think the atmosphere around anyone that's been to Villa Park especially in recent uh, weeks is there is a real atmosphere there was you know I had uh, some of the family go on on Saturday and and I was just you know I, you know that there's a sense of anticipation there and, and there's a real atmosphere which which is building and that's only helping that's only helping the cause and, and I think it has to continue to be that way until the end of the season there needs to be a lot of energy and and, and, and enthusiasm and 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 let's see where it gets us. Um, I don't like I said earlier. I don't think every, anyone's getting carried away. No. It, it is getting, it is getting taken a, a step at a time, and 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 it'll continue to do so because there are there are so many points still to play for, and there's some tough games to come as well. I was just trying to count up Ollie Watkins' goals in his last however many games, um, and all I know is that there's a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's just looking so good. But the question really is, um, who's better, Ollie Watkins now? Or Gabby Ogbonnahor in his prime. Ollie, Ollie's better. Oh, <laughs> oh put me on the spot here. I know. Listen, <laughs> obviously Gabby's Gabby's record and 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 what he did for the football club oh, and, and when he was in his when he was in in his uh, in his prime, he, he you know he, he's a, he was a talisman for the team as Ollie is now. I think uh, you know when you've got someone who can lead the line and and, and be a focal point for for a team. And then on top of that, you're adding the goals with that, the goal contributions. It, it's a massive thing. He's obviously having a – he's in a purple patch at the moment and long may that continue right up until the end of the season and belong, but uh, – beyond, sorry. But, um, yeah, listen, to, to, to differentiate between the two for me is, is, is a little bit di- – but the fact that I played with uh, – Gabby and and maybe against Ollie. Uh, I'll, give, I'll, give, Gabby, I'll give Gabby. I'll give Gabby the one up. I think as yes. well. I think as well though. You look at Ollie Mille, He's become clinical, hasn't he? Even his goal on the weekend. You know, the ball comes into him. Great touch across the defender. Dink. He said himself, hasn't he? He's been practicing non-stop. Different finishes. For me, he's been an outstanding form. And if an England squad was named today, he'd hundred percent be in it. Ah, oh, listen. He's 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 obviously. You know he's working day in day out yeah. as you do as a professional footballer, um, and it, and, it, and now he's reaping the rewards. Um, that that wasn't that was always there. It's just now it's coming to fruition. He, he's obviously found that found some form and found some, a level of confidence and an understanding that's got him into the right positions. And and what he does in front of goal, what he's doing in, currently in front of goal, like you said, is is will will earn him a lot of plaudits. But 
you know, may also get him back into that in England squad. Mm. Um, I'm going to give you some words for Gabby Abunho, um, so you can pick out a few if you want. Uh, was he a good trainer, a teacher's oh, no. pet, a loose cannon, <laughs> any, all of the above? Oh. He can be honest, Millet, I'm a big boy. Good, good trainer, I'd go, <laughs> I'd go 50% of my, what I would consider if, a Millet, if it was um, Ram Robbins... I was on it then for Ram Robbins where you played like yeah, but that's not five aside. <laughs> we, we, had him, we had him for the last 20 minutes. We had him for the last 20 minutes. <laughs> what about how, how close was he with the managers? Um, I think during my time there, um, which obviously was came as a result of Villa getting relegated, um, I'd say probably... Not as much, but I, I would have imagined that Gabby would have had, a, had an influence. He would have had an influence long before that when he was captaining and things like that. Absolutely. What about how much of a loose cannon was he away from the pitch? No, that's not a. There's, no. Yeah, there's not. There's nothing for me to not say. Not even yet. on the Christmas party, or was it? Was it? <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, we had some. We had some good times. It was not a. Uh, there. Yeah, there's nothing. That, there's the nothing professionals, that's Laura. You know what this tells me? Former teammates <laughs> stick together, right? So I'm going to have to work a little bit harder to get more out of Millet. And in terms of Crystal Palace and what they've done so far this season, they also have a new manager at the helm, and it's a manager that they know really well. Roy Hodgson back in there, back to back wins now for him. Two games in charge. They've moved up to twelfth. They're on thirty three points. Six points above the relegation zone. It feels like a much healthier position, doesn't it, Millet? Yeah, listen, absolutely. Um, I think it's it's just shown that you know he's, uh, Roy's come in and and just re-energised the place and and brought a little bit of stability. Stability. There's a there's a there's, they're doing it in a way that they're not too unfamiliar with. Um, there's there's there are some new players there that he hasn't worked with. But one thing I'd say that. Um, Roy does do is he gets the best out of the group. He knows how to communicate and knows how to engage those players. And, you know, it, it's, it's been great to see them get the back-to-back -back wins and, and you know, hopefully that continues on going forward. Do you look at players like Elise, um, Eze, you know, maybe people said that they didn't improve under Vieira, which to me was probably a bit harsh. But even players like Eduard as well, Millet, like against Leeds, he looked strong, holding the ball up, took his goal well. That's what they signed him for, didn't they, Crystal Palace, to be that striker and get double figures in a season. And he's been underperforming, hasn't he? Yeah, listen, there's obviously a, there's an accountability on both parts. Um, most definitely, the, you know, the players, the players, listen, you've been there, I've been there, that, that you have to look internally. Um, you have yeah. to look at, at yourself. Are you doing it? Are you doing it? And if not, what's missing? And <laughs> can the people around you support you with that? Um, that goes for, you know, whether it's at the training ground, on the training pitch, away from away from the training ground, how are you getting your support? And uh, sometimes, particularly for younger players, that, that, that can that can be a little bit tricky. Um, it's easy to get misguided or have a perception that maybe that's not, uh, you're doing well, but actually that's not, you know, you still can't perform. So, I think now what's you know obviously they've they've they've, they've managed to, to find a formula and a solution for the time being that's 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 worked and every, everyone seems to be understanding of what's required of them and they they look like they're enjoying themselves um, you know it was a it was tough in that first 15, 20 minutes against Leeds but they just stuck to task and uh, you know in the end did it quite comfortably. Mm, I wanted to ask about uh, one of your former managers, Dean Smith. So you were with him at Aston Villa, John Terry as well. They've gone in at Leicester with Craig Shakespeare. Um, he had some great success at, at Aston Villa, get them promoted, especially that charge in, in that season to get them up. 17th in the Premier League one year, 11th in the Premier League another year. The Carabao Cup final as well against Manchester City, which I thought was a, yes. a brilliant performance for Aston Villa in that cup final. What do you think, in terms of how you know Dean Smith as, as a manager and as a person, what qualities do you think he's got to, to go into Leicester and make a difference there? Yeah, obviously it's never an easy situation, I think, with so, you know, so many changes. And then I think if you're looking at it from a, you know, with, with how many games are left, the schedule, it's, it's all going to be a little bit challenging. But what I will say is they're going to need to obviously engage engage the boys straight away and re-energize them and and get them in in some sort of shape and organization that they're comfortable with um and i know that they'll do that they'll have a formula they'll have a template that they'll use um they've obviously been through the experience of of keeping villa up in the premier league um over the course of a season 
So they're going to have their, their work's definitely going to be cut out, but um, I'm sure that you know that's the reason why the opportunities come about is is that he can see it as something that that can be achieved, and and he'll believe that, and so will his staff, and he'll make sure that everyone else around there will believe that also. You'll also know Jack really well, Jack Grealish. What do you think of the way that he's developed into one of the best players in the Premier League at the moment? Yeah, listen, I was fortunate enough last night. Actually, I went to the game. I took uh, a couple of my boys there, and. Uh, it was great to see. I hadn't seen him live since uh, for a very long time, and uh, it was yeah encouraging to see. He's very much one of the main one of the main men in that team, and and it's it's really refreshing to see. He, he'll always take the weasel, you know, it, to see it, and I think more so that everyone's sort of understanding that now and and can see it. It's it's, it's really for myself. It's it's really pleasing to see because I know how hard he does work on on trying to be the a better player every single day. Yeah. Okay, Milo, thank you so much for your time. We'll thank you, go. Milo. Really appreciate that. No worries, guys. Thanks for having me on. Top oh, man, Milo. Anytime. Honestly, wonderful. Oh, thank nice you so guy. much. No secrets about Gabby. You just, Lovely. you're <laughs> just pleased that he didn't show you up. Do you know exactly. what? Next time, because it, what a brilliant talker, by the way. Um, yes. We'd love to have him on again, but the only way we have him on again is if he gives me a little yeah. nugget of information. I think if I'm you. not on, he might, you know, release info. You know what? I will find out your secrets. <laughs> I will find people that played with you now. Young, you couldn't wait to, to I tell know. the secrets. Young, <laughs> young, he was all young, over was it, telling you everything, but to cut him off. If Ashley Young's listening this morning, can you just text me? Me a couple more so that by the end of the show, I've got something on Gabby this morning. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods, Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.